Um, <laughs> now, you will know today's guest as the beast on the chase, but away from the studio lights, Mark Levet has made no secret of his weight struggles, at one time hitting 29 stone on the scales, before bravely stripping off in support of our Body Stories campaign. Uh, now, Mark Levet is more confident than ever after losing 10 stone, and he's here to tell us more. Hi there, Mark. Uh, good afternoon, ladies, and good. congratulations on your RTS award, by the thank way. You. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, you're having no problem with your hair, are you, Mark? <laughs> Sprouting out all no, over. No, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky. Both my grandfathers lost their hair in their early 30s. Oh, and, wow. Um, I'm really lucky. If anything, it grows too quick. Uh, at the same time, I think the person who comes up with a, a pill or a stem cell therapy to replace hair loss is going to make billions. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, listen, let's talk about your incredible um, weight loss. I believe you're really excited about the prospect of going out and buying new pants. Is that right? <laughs> oh. Yes, it's uh, I gradually dropped X's off my size from 5XL to 4XL. And it looks like the next time I go shopping, I'll be able to squeeze into XL pants. Oh, I'm, no. I'm not, wow. Small things, but important things. So, 10 stone over what period of time, Mark? Um, I was 29 stone in my last year as a full-time teacher in 2003. Um, and I was on the verge of getting high blood pressure pills. Um, yeah. I've been mainly at about 25, 26 up until probably just before the lockdown. And uh, the lockdown for sort of several factors all come together nicely and the, the weight's just fallen off. So, can you talk us through what you've been doing, Mark? Have you been exercising as well as diet? The principal thing has been running around after a hyperactive three-year-old in lockdown when the <laughs> nursery was shut. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure virtually every lady in the land knows this, but now I'm suddenly going, how? How do you keep up with them? Yeah. And... I just found by the end of the evening, it was like instead of going to the fridge for a bit of late night snacking or whatever, all I could do was just collapse in a heap on the bed. Mark, was it a conscious yeah. decision or was it something that, that um, nudged you into going down the path of, of weight loss and healthy eating and stuff? Oh, I think I've been lucky in that I had suspected COVID back about a year ago in that for a fortnight, I just lost my sense of taste and smell and I just didn't want to eat for a fortnight. Now, as a fairly big guy, as you might imagine, the weight falls off you in that scenario. And I think it almost kick-started it. But a combination of various things. I'm on a, a high-protein uh, diet with the good people of Muscle Foods, so eating an awful lot of meat, and lean meat, etc. And much as I love uh, chips and, and other carbs, I'm having quite a bit less than I used to. Uh, and it's, it, it's sort of become a virtuous cycle. I'm not feeling that hungry, so you eat less, so you lose weight, so you're not as hungry. It's, you know, mm. I know it's going to come to an end at some point. I'm just almost like riding the wave and going, yippee. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you, you look amazing, Mark, but obviously, as you say, it's much more about... It's about the it's about the, the the healthy eating. And you mentioned COVID, but, of course, this year has pointed out to us, hasn't it, that... Being that overweight is incredibly dangerous. It's not about just, get, you know, fitting into it, in our case, a size 10 trousers. It's about the fact that, especially with COVID being around, that it's so much more dangerous for people who are overweight. So I think it's inspirational to a lot of people that you have done this and are taking it as seriously as you can. Are you missing sugar? Because I'm an emotional eater as well, and I have to be very careful. And it's it, and since I gave up drinking, it's all the, the sugary things that I miss and crave. How are you coping with that? Well, first of all, size 10, Denise, chapeau. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> not uh, anymore, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a drinker, but sugar's always been my downfall. A, a good friend of mine who had the gastric band operations, a GP, she advised me against going down the route because she said it won't do you any good. You get all your calories by sugar, and that's far too easy to digest. So I've had to do it the hard way. Um, but, yeah, I, I still love sugar. I miss it terribly. I, I still have some sugar, but an awful lot less. I, and I the, the answer is I should have less still. The thing about maintaining weight, isn't it, is that you can still have those lovely things, but you just have to make informed choices about them. Whereas I think the people who eat like you and I, we just grab for them in times of, of, of woe or when we feel very emotional. And it's sort of breaking that thinking, isn't it? 
Mark, do you? Yeah, and I think I'm missing pub meals so, so much. I'm missing pubs. But yeah. you don't realise just how big those pub meals are. Even a guy the size of me is struggling to finish some of them. And then if you add a side order of garlic bread or onion rings or something, it's <laughs> lovely but not good. Yeah. It sounds yeah. as if you've really changed your habits, Mark, and that's that's what you have to do to have kind of long-term um, weight loss and get it stable again. But listen, we have to speak to you, of course, about Beat the Chaser. <laughs> That was not a wise move. <laughs> that music. Effectively, the visor comes down and I go into beast mode. So, what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, do you do you really turn into a different person? Whether you you're in kind of game mode? It, it really is. It's um, it's my go music. It's like when the wrestlers get their entrance ring music. You could see them getting psyched up. They're ready to go. The adrenaline's starting to flood through me now. And right now, I'm seeing you not as lovely people, but as opponents to be destroyed. <laughs> oh, I just asked, um, Mark, do you pick your own name? Like, you're called the Beast, aren't you? Was yeah, that, I'm was the... That... the was I was known as the Beast um, for 15, 20 years before the chase came around, oh. and I got the witnesses to prove it. What <laughs> happened all the way back in 2009 is Brad started calling me the Beast on set. Um, Sean didn't have a nickname for that first series, and obviously the focus groups uh, came back for series two, and suddenly everyone had to have a nickname. So that's why every chaser in the world now has a nickname. Sorry about that, right. guys. And More importantly, I own the Beast nickname. <laughs> As I keep reminding ITV's lawyers, they can use it, but it's all mine. <laughs> well, listen, we've got a, we've got a clip from Saturday night's uh, show, Mark, and of course it's a celebrity version of Beat the Chasers. It's on at eight thirty-five on Saturday night on ITV. Here we go. Where were you, ladies? I didn't see any of you there. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Oh. Slippy, right? That's very slippy, isn't it? I'm like, I'm like a dancing machine. <laughs> <laughs> I love your suit. That's cool. Thank you. What you, everyone? Yep. Hello, Could Jeff. I just say I'm really excited, so I might just talk and say anything. Like anything because could happen. You like, you've, you've told me that you love this show. I love it. It's so exciting to be here on the slippy stage and everything, and they're all sitting there staring at me and they're all trying to stare me down. But it don't matter to me because I live on the edge. I'm on the highway to hell. And sometimes I stop at the little chef, so I do your worst. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Find out if Joe ever <laughs> answers a question at 8.35 on Saturday night. Um, Mark, just before we let you go, uh, have you updated your dating profile? Because I believe you've become a very popular guy, uh, especially with fans of the show. Well, let me put it this way. I don't think it's possible to do any dating at the moment without breaking the law well, under the current state of lockdown. Um, let's just say I'm married to my work. I'm, I'm, my absolute priority is looking after my son. And so while the situation is what it is, I'm concentrating on my work. Having said that, April the 12th, you'll see me in the pubs. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Mark. You can buy Cheers. us a drink. <laughs> Thanks very much. Lovely to speak to you. Aww. Aww. Thank Love you, ladies. Mark. Yeah, Bye, thank Mark. you.